Actually, that's the last point of my message, finding your place, but we'll put it at the first. Finding your place. Awesome. Let's just go to the Lord again in prayer. Father, we thank you. You have a word for us today, and we're joining in faith, Father. Lord, even as your word became flesh and dwelt among us, Lord Jesus, we just take this word inside. We pray that, Holy Spirit, you help us assimilate this and be doers of this word, Father. We pray for the powerful breath breakthroughs and miracles that are going to come forth because of faith in your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this is, um, again, prophetically, I didn't want to make more of it than it is, and yet I just could not help but feel like so many things were convening together spiritually with uh, this time of year and Christmas and the dedication of our building and um, just everything that God was saying and revealing and this uh, time of dedication but also Jesus was dedicated unto the Lord and we have a few babies in the next few weeks that are going to be dedicated to the Lord and I don't know if you knew but Jesus was dedicated to the Lord in at the temple as well. And so, you know, I, I really felt like Jesus was dedicated because his body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. As much as the lamb was put in the in the manger and that's what we were eating, uh, you know, it was a place to eat that Jesus gets right down to simplicity and says, unless you eat me, and there's signs all along the way and confirmations in the Holy Spirit. And I, I know you can't take all this in in your brain but I'm sure as I'm coming out like a machine gun with all this prophetically is that you're getting it it's like Lord this is such a time like it is such a time prophetically um just fulfillment this is just such a time of fulfillment uh and just look look for that look for the promises that how many here are believing for something specifically and some of you have waited a long long time and the lord says aha now is the time when the time had fully come i'm reading that in this all through the word it's just boinging out at me when the time had fully come and so there's certain things i was i was praying one morning this week and praying fervently and asking God why is this uh, why is this taking so long I've been praying this do I am I praying wrong do I keep praying what's with this and that day every time I'd open the word I'd see and when the fullness of time and when the time had come and so I just want you to be encouraged that the time of fulfillment has come it is a hand expect big things from God so we are going to be looking at God's word and participating in what has been promised. And so we look at these two beautiful examples, Luke chapter 2, beginning at uh, verse 22. Participating in what's been promised, the scriptures, Luke 2, 22 to 39. And when the time came, again, it's everywhere. <laughs> when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as is, as is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and offer a sacrifice in keeping with what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, now Dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you had prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory 
of your people Israel and the father's mother uh, the father child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too I'm just going to stop there because that's a, a lot to take in this morning. We want to be sensitive to the little ones. So we have a few awesome practical ways here given to us that we can participate in what's been promised. So first of all, we see to participate in what's been promised, you do what you already know to do. And here we see Mary and Joseph um, they present as it was required in the law to do. They were just doing what they already knew to do. And it's very important when you're still waiting for, for what has been promised, what to do is, is just keep doing what you know to do. Keep being faithful. Keep on keeping on. Keep on starting your day in prayer and the word and confessing the word and declaring the word and keep believing and keep on pressing in and do what your hands find to do and do everything that God has already revealed to you in his word. Just keep doing the good that you already know to do. Is that simple enough? Amen. Second thing is to prepare your heart. Simeon, it says he was righteous and devout in following the Lord. So he's got, we've got two-way thing going on. He was righteous. He was in right standing and right relationship with God. God. He and God were tight. Yeah. Amen. He and God were tight. And he was up in that standing, keeping his relationship strong with the Lord. And he was devout. He was practicing what he preached. He was practicing and being a good example to everybody that he wasn't just a hearer, but he was a doer of that word. He was totally dedicated and devout himself. That's your second, um, second point. So, so to participate, we need to prepare our heart. God says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen? So you keep your heart pure before God and before others, and you will see God. You will see him. You will see those things come to fulfillment. Third, position yourself, posture yourself in faith. He was waiting. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. So we need to posture ourselves in faith by waiting. How many of you know waiting isn't sitting there twiddling your thumbs? Waiting, sometimes you got to wait for things. Not a nation, the word says, the nation is not born in a day. This vision did not come about in a week or two. When the Lord first gave me the word, go and look for a field, um, I literally got in my van and started driving around looking for a field, saying, God, unless you put an angel on this piece of property, how will I know what you're talking about? It was a walk of faith. And it took time. Amen. And here's some things. Uh, you know, there's a few people in the Bible that waited for something for 20 years. So 2018, uh, Jacob waited for 20 years to get position, possession of his wives and property. Israel waited 20 years for their deliverance through Samson. And the Lord raised up a Samson. Solomon waited 20 years for the completion of his house and the Lord's house. So some things take a while. How many of you know the moment you hear good news yes you are pregnant it's going to take some time. So what do you do? You wait. Does that mean you're just waiting there twiddling thumbs? No. You're eating right. You're exercising. You're making sure you're getting your sleep. You're waiting. You're doing something when you're waiting. Amen. And so we need to posture ourselves in faith knowing not oh God why hasn't this happened to me yet? We just posture ourselves in, in faith uh, to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. There's many scriptures you can do your own little study. Look in your concordance and the word wait. 
Amen. And to some of you, God is saying, in my good timing, this shall all come to pass because I have promised and heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So you posture yourself in faith, declare the word of God over your situation. That's waiting. Amen. So know how to wait. Posture yourselves in faith. And then plug into the power. It says he was, he was not only waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was on him. How we need the Holy Spirit. I, my heart was so full that I had so much coming at me this morning. I said, okay, God, I'm just going to have to wait on you. And he just said, keep it simple and do one thing at a time. It's like, oh, God, how is this all going to fit? We just have to plug into the power. Okay, Holy Spirit, you know how today's going to go. Amen. I trust you. You be saying that throughout your day. Holy Spirit, only you know how I'm going to get done what I'm to get done. Give me the wisdom as we sang beautifully this morning. Give me the wisdom. Show me what to do, God. Show me what to do. So we plug in and we don't try to do anything on our own. We don't try. We ask for the Holy Spirit's help. He was given. Jesus said, don't worry. I'm going to go away. But when I leave, I'm going to send another one. And he will comfort you and he will counsel you. Amen. So don't go it alone. Plug into the power of the Holy Spirit. Next, get a promise. It was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he has seen the Lord's Christ, the Lord's Messiah. Get a promise. Get a promise. God will give you a promise if you're asking, God, I need a word on this one. You should see the front of my Bible. How many promises? How many times I pressed in to saying, oh God, sorry, but I need another word. I need, I need you to show me a fresh word. I need to know I'm on track. It's like when you're driving down the 401 to Toronto, every so often it's like, okay, there's another sign. Yep, I'm going in the right direction. God will give you a sign. Every time you need a sign, he'll ask you for a sign. There's been time I said, Father, forgive me. Forgive me any doubt and unbelief, but give me a fresh word today. I need to know know that I'm still on the right track. And so it was revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah. It's a done deal. Amen. It was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. So then we have that confidence. Amen. Show me, Lord, the end from the beginning. Did you know God is a God who shows the end from the beginning? Amen. He can show you the end of the story. I knew the end of the story in this place. I had just closed my eyes. When we would come to the field, how many times we came to the field, it's called Field of Dreams, and we would just stand in this very place, and we would just thank the Lord for what a glorious building he was going to put on this piece of property. Amen. We knew eventually, we didn't know exactly how or when, but things were happening, events were, were were, were unfolding and so it was revealed to him I have so many promises concerning my kids my grandsons I'll tell you anytime there was a time I was crying I was praying for my William I got such a promise for him I went it blew my mind did you know when God gives you a word when God gave you a word to Simeon that he would not die before he saw the Lord's Messiah could you imagine how pumped he was like, Simeon, what on earth has happened to you? When you got a promise on the inside of you, whoo, I'll tell you, devil can say whatever he wants. I already know the end of the story. Amen. amen. Every promise is yes and amen. You know, get a, lay hold of a promise. Your sons are taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. Just to start declaring it, start participating in that promise. And then we've got to not only get a promise, but we have to perform. We have to be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The promptings of the Holy Spirit. He was not only filled in a general sense, oh yeah, I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. He had to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit every day because he was going about his duties one day. Uh, keep doing what he knew to do. And then in verse 27, it says he was moved by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple courts. 
And I'm not so sure he knew the rest of the story. Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going. The day I met David at the pond, I'm in the middle of cleaning my house and I grabbed my coat, put on my boots, didn't take gloves or my hat or anything, rushed down, got as far as uh, the troll bridge, I call it the troll bridge, and there I met David and two hours later I said, I've got to go home, I'm freezing, I was just freezing, I was a block of ice, bled him to the Lord. Uh, you know, we need to be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It's not just, oh yeah, are you filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, if God says to you, drop what you're doing and go to Straight Street or go here or go there, roll down your window, talk to that neighbor, are we sensitive to the prompting? See, because we can have a promise of the Lord and just go, oh, yeah, yada. But you know what? God says, you got a part to play in this. We got to, yes, we got to follow through exactly. We got to perform. We got to be sen sensitive to the promptings because one day God will say, hey, do this, or do that, or go here, or go there, or call so-and-so and ask them, or whatever he says, we are to participate in the promises of God. Is this good word or what? I, honestly, the Holy Ghost gave it to me. I thought, oh God, this is such a masterpiece. It's so good because we there's times we, we need to know that we can do something. We're doers, aren't we? It's just like, okay, so what do I do about this? With every single child God has given you, with all your careers, with your future ahead of you, isn't it wonderful? You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can be sensitive to his promptings. God knows exact places where you're going to live. He know, he's got this perfect plan, but he wants you to be sensitive to the promptings of the Lord. Amen. And so... Here it is. He's at the temple courts, and then the parents brought in their child, and he's going, this is the day. There will come a day where, there, your eyes will see it. I can see this place today. The beautiful lighting and everything. You know what? It's just, oh, I love to brag on Jesus. I tell everybody, do you know all our great big, are they 13 foot doors? I always say they're about 13 foot doors. Is that, is that how, how big are they? Three, three, what, all the way to the top, Doug? Um, Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> However, they're big honking doors, and guess what? They've all been dedicated, they've all been donated to the church. Everything that we see, we got a brag story. So we said when we started believing God for all the chairs, it was like, okay, God, you got a plan. How do we get these chairs? And, and, and God gave us a plan. Everybody could dedicate a certain amount, and they could, they could become part of the chair, uh, chair, charity thing. So that's what we called it. Anyways, there's a brag story about everything, but we had to be obedient and acknowledge God. God, we need your help on this one. Yes. Right? We don't want to just buy it all because, well, we need it. So let's buy it and then go in debt. No, God had a plan. And so it keeps us dependent on the Holy Spirit. And then here he is, Simeon comes to the temple and there's the parents dedicating. And can you imagine the joy? Today is the day, and he says, a praise us. So what's the next part in our thing? When it comes, you pray, praise, you pray, and you prophesy to that situation. This is what Simeon does. He says, sovereign Lord, as you have promised. He just breaks out in praise and prayer. You have promised that you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen, I've seen it. It's reality. That which you prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory for my people, your people Israel. And then he, after he prays to the Lord in a beautiful, spontaneous outburst of, of joy and praise unto the Lord, he prophesies to the parents. And he says, this child is destined to the cause and falling and rising of many of Israel and a sign that will be spoken against. Now maybe some of you think, well, God has never spoken to me or given me a word for anybody else. But this is my experience. The word says, eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. Anybody I have, uh, we've had a few young women in our homes uh, at different times, opened our homes to different people that didn't have a home. And, and I would say, you know what? God will speak to you. Go in the dining room over there. Here's some full scat paper and a pen. You ask God to speak to you and just start writing. 
and write what comes to you. Okay, God, here I am. I'm waiting to hear from you. Whatever comes to your mind, they come out with full scaps of paper. And I'm going, you, you got this from God. It's like, see, don't tell me you can't hear from God because his word says my sheep hear my voice and none other do they follow. The problem is a lot of times we don't take the time to sit and just write what, what we're getting from God. Just write what you're getting. If you're feeling impressed, something, sometimes you think, oh my goodness, this is a bit weird, but never mind. Without fail, we have this new thing with our girlfriends, our intercessory group, where we uh, stop giving physical gifts and we get a word from the Lord. Without fail, everybody's got a word for, every, for somebody. You know, and sometimes it seems like, okay, God, if you're sure, and you're just writing what's coming to you, they'll, they'll just, go, just go to orbit and back because they'll just think, only God knew. Isn't it wonderful? We can hear. If you're a sheep, if you're a believer, you're a sheep. And you hear. Amen. Don't ever, you young people, I guarantee you, you get down and you say, I want a word. And the Lord will start to speak to you or give you a word for somebody else. Because He that's who he is. He's a God who speaks. And he loves to disclose to his people the secrets of his heart. He does nothing. The word of God says God does nothing without revealing it to his prophets. Amen. So I take that one to the bank. I say, God, you said you do nothing without revealing. So I want to know the end. I want to have a, something to anchor myself in so I can cooperate and participate with your promises. Amen. And so the last place after praise and pray and to prophesy is, um, is just find your place. And this is the last little bit of this message, and I won't go on and on about it. It's, it's Anna. Anna as well. There's a confirmation right after that in verse 36. It says, there was also a prophet Anna. So much for women in ministry. So, um, and she was a daughter of Peniel. So nope, she wasn't a guy. And she was from the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. And she lived with her husband for seven years after marriage. And then was a widow. And she never left the temple but worshipped day and night, fasting and praying. Coming up to them, to this young couple, dedicating Jesus. At that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking for forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Again, she was finding her place. How many of you know something sad happened to her after only eight years of being married? She loses her husband. And yet, even in her circumstances, she dedicates the rest of her life, never leaving the temple, day and night, fasting and praying and looking forward to the promises of God. What a place. Find your place. Now, is that everybody's place? Does that mean you guys should quit your jobs and, and, and come? And, nope, don't. Find your place. God gives gifts severally as he wills, but in your workplace, in your place in the body of Christ? Can you vacuum for two hours, maybe once in a while? Or can you, what's the passion in your heart? Or ask God, God, what is my part in the body of Christ? If we're a body, I'm a part. Amen. Amen. And nothing looks lovely just all by itself. You just take any old, old nose, if you took all our noses and put them on a little blackboard or whatever, we just go, well, you know, not everybody's a nose. You know, we're all different parts. But put all together, we look pretty good. God did this. He divinely ordered us. So we can't all be a nose, and we can't all be hands, and we can't all be Annas, and we can't all be good at praise and worship. That's okay. Uh, be the best you. Here's Anna, such a humble place to saying, well, that's something I can do. I'm old. I'm a woman. I don't have any husband. God, what can I do? And he says, I got the perfect job for you. Amen. You can be ministering to me day and night. What a privileged position. What an awesome place to find yourself day and night in the house of the Lord. And so we can find our place. That's another thing we can do. We participate in the promises of God. Amen. So we're going to get a promise from God and we can do these steps to participate. And all God's people said, amen. And if you need a miracle, just continually thank God. He's made provision through the body and blood of Jesus. It's yours. Got your name on.
God. Amen.